up, y'all? It's your girl, Sophia. And today I want to talk about something that I think most people are thinking about. They're just not talking about it. That is, how do I get more? And when I'm talking about more, I mean in every area of your life, but specifically, how do I get more money? Like, how do I change my financial situation? And I know that's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. And a lot of my peers in conversation is, is, is one of the most dominant thoughts in most people who are adulting in their minds. There may be some people who work a nine to five job. There are some people who are self-employed. There's some people who have no income right now. And the, the thing that you're thinking about most of the time is like, how do I change my situation? You know, I, I don't have kids. I just got a dog and he's sitting here in my lap right now. And I know a lot of people have families. They've got kids. They're trying to figure out how to, how to make that, that shift. And I want to have that conversation. I want to talk to everyone today about the fact that it's okay to want more. I don't know about y'all, but we live in a society. We live around people who try to make us feel bad or make us feel less than when we're thinking about really elevating and generating wealth and changing our financial situation. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think the, the reason that as a community, right, a lot of people are struggling is because we don't have these conversations. We try to go around the thing. We try to go around conversations like these, which need to be had because you can only really improve a problem that you address, that you talk about, that you discuss. And then you got to get around people who are, who are like-minded, people who are just like you, who have similar goals. And you, you discuss ideas to change the situation. And that's what, you know, I want to do on this channel. That's what I want to do in this community. That's what I want to build is a, is a tribe of like-minded people who said, listen, I know that wealth is a birthright. I know that God didn't create me to struggle. I know he said in his word that he put me on this earth to dominate and to create abundance. So how do I do it? And one of the things that we've got to start doing is we got to be okay with having these kind of conversations. It starts with being aware. It starts with uh, recognizing and acknowledging what it is that we truly want. And I think that's, that's really where this conversation can start is what do you really want? And I don't think we spend enough time because it's always looked down upon for us to really figure out what we want in life. Like, what car do you want to drive? What neighborhood do you want to live in? What toys do you want? How do you want your kids to live? What kind of clothes you want to wear? Guys, it's okay. It's okay to think about these things. And if you know me, y'all, I'm not into things at all. I'm not flashy. You all see I got on a black t-shirt. I'm not into design. I don't care what stage I'm at in my life when I'm making money. I'm never thinking about what I can go and buy, like as far as stuff. What I am guilty of is I'm about experiences. I like to eat. I like to eat well. I like to be in nice atmospheres. I like to, I like to travel. I like to experience new cultures. So that's where I'll spend and nothing's wrong with that either. But you got to identify what it is you truly want. And you got to be okay with one speaking about it, thinking about it, and really coming up with a game plan to actually achieve it. Because if you have a desire and you don't have action steps to back it up, it's really just wishful thinking. And I'm sure most people, you don't want to just wish about your dream life. You want to actually live that. You want to make that reality. And the only way to go from where you're at to like the top of the mountain, which is your goal, is you got to have a plan. You got to have a map. You got to have a blueprint to get there. I don't think we spend enough time, you know, as individuals and as, as community focused on that. And I think we'd spend so much time looking at the few people who do have it and that's comparing our situation to them and trying to nitpick and criticize them on how come they've got it or we don't. But if we would just switch that energy and transfer that energy from, from, from comparison, which is the thief of joy, to really our planning and preparation so we can have it for ourselves, I think we'll move so much further. So what do you really want? What do you really, really, really want? And it could be material stuff, y'all. A lot of times when I have conversations with people, and I, I'm guilty myself, people would say, what do you want? And I kind of said something that was just good for the human race, good for humanity. No, what you really want? Like, I want a Bentley Continental GT. I want a 34 boat with twin engines. I could go from Florida to the Bahamas whenever I want to. I want a business that's created passive income. Doesn't matter where I'm at, I'm at in the world. These are things that I want. I want to be able to help my community. I want to be able to help my family. I want to be able to help my friends and, 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 and invest into their dreams and their, their goals. These are things that I truly want to do. But before, I wouldn't say I wanted the boat or the car, or the, or the penthouse. And I, and I think that when you're thinking about your goals, you got to really want something for you to actually do what's required to get it. Because getting what you want ain't easy. We already know that. That's why most people struggle. Because the easy way is typically the way that don't take us to what we want. It just helps us be comfortable. 
And one of the greatest enemies of getting what you want in life is being content, being complacent, being comfortable. You got to get uncomfortable because because when you're uncomfortable, that forces you to grow. And yo, I, I read a lot of books. I watch a lot of videos. I listen to a lot of audios. And one of my mentors from afar, his name is Dr. Miles Monroe. He said that anything that you're willing to tolerate, you'll never change. And so much times we focus on the things we like in life. We got to start spending some time with ourselves and figuring out what we hate. Because he said only the things you hate, you'll actually change. And we don't talk about what we hate because that's not normal. Society has conditioned us to just have wishful thinking, which is great. You've got to have a positive attitude. But you have to have some deep conversations with yourself and figure out what you don't like. What are you refusing to tolerate in your life? Think about it. If you're in a relationship and you got a partner who's lying to you all the time and you tolerate lying, they're going to always lie because you tolerate it. But if you hate lying, you'll never date a liar because the second they start lying, you're like, man, you out of here because you won't tolerate it. What you won't tolerate, you'll change. And I want you to think about that. That's something I had to do and I'm still doing it all the time. So I'm figuring out what is it that I totally don't like, like I hate it, that I won't tolerate in my life. And when you figure those things out, as soon as you get a red flag or a sign of that in something or someone or a situation, you'll change it immediately. You won't deal with it. And that's how we get closer to our goals because there's going to be some things that you're going to have to eliminate from your life. There's going to be some habits you've got to eliminate. There's going to be some friends, some family you're going to have to, you know, distance yourself from from a while in order to grow. That's why they say elevation requires separation. Elevation requires isolation. It's not because you're a jerk or it's not because you think you're better than other people. But in order for you to really go to your next level, there's a lot of things you got to leave behind in order to go, in order to grow. And I think that's something we got to really embrace when it comes to our finances. You know, you got to be willing to distance yourself from some things you used to do your whole life. Some people used to kick it with your whole life. So friends who you know your whole life, if they're not aligned with where you're going, you got to leave them alone for a while. You got to. There's no other way. And something that I know I'm guilty of and I've been guilty of is a lot of times I've got good friends who I have history with, but their behaviors do not align with where I'm going. And I still stay around them. And every time I hang out with them, I, I'm upset the next day because that interaction took me further away from my goal. Y'all ever had like a friend who just spends money? They always want to do something that's requiring spending money and they broke. They ain't got nothing going on for them in their life. And you're here on this path to wealth creation, this path to accumulation, right? To go into your next level. And even though you know you, you don't need to be hanging out with that person, you're like, man, I don't want to treat them like that. I feel guilty. I'm going I'm to kick it with them. Every time you kick it with them, you end up spending money you would have never spent if you would have just said no. Anyone, is it just me? If that's happened to you before, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Because it happens to me. I have different friends where that happens. And... All that is is an indicator that's someone you got to distance yourself from right now. Because when you're, when you're on a path to a goal, you got to think about it this way. I think this will help you because it, it helped me. You got to look at every decision you make, everything you do as, is this getting me closer to my goal or is this taking me further away from it? And if you would gauge every interaction with every person or every decision you make by that, it'll help you make better decisions. Because if you know your goal is to save $10,000, and you know you're going to kick it with someone who's going to cost you to spend 200 tonight. Is that getting you closer to the 10000 or taking you further away? Taking you further away, so don't do it. These are the tough conversations we got to have with ourselves. And then these are the tough conversations we got to have with the people around us because either they respect the goal or they don't. And if they can't respect where you're going, then you gotta, you got to cut them off. You know, I got financial goals that I'm working towards. And some of the closest people in my life, I have to have conversations with them and listen. Don't ask me to take no trip in the next 12 months. Just please don't do it. Like, I'm asking you to make this easy for me. Don't make me have to choose. Don't try to throw a guilt trip on me because I'm headed towards a goal. And if you support me, you will help me in this. And that's not always easy because you're going to have to miss some trips. You're going to have to miss some parties. You're going to have to miss some weddings. Your group of friends are going to have to do things without you. And you're going to have to miss out on that. You're going to have to be okay with that because guess what? Sacrifice isn't giving something up, you know. Sacrifice is giving up something lower to get something higher in the future. And that's how you got to look at it. So are you willing to give up the club this weekend so that next week you can buy a section in the club? It, it, it's like, it's, it's a trade-off. And you got to ask yourself, what's more important to you? And that's some of the things that's helped me 
really stay disciplined or stay on track to my goals. And y'all, I fall off a lot. I'm still in progress. I'm still super far from my goals. But I realize that if I don't just try to focus on the top of the mountain from where I'm at at the bottom of the hill, and I just say, hey, where can I, what can I focus on in the next 24 hours to get me closer? That helps. Because sometimes when we look at where we're at in our situation, and we look at where we're trying to go, and we see how far away it is, we get discouraged. you like, man, that ain't going to never happen. Or if it doesn't happen fast enough, we're frustrated. Just try to focus on your 24 hours you have in front of you. What could you do today to get one step closer? What decisions can you avoid today to get you one step closer? In this 24 hours you have, should you save the money or should you go out? What's going to get you closer to the goal? Those are things that's going to help you just take one step, one foot in front of the other, because that's how you get your goals done. It's not going to be some quantum leap. It's going to be one step in front of the, the other. One of my mentors said, she said, Sophie, daily disciplines done daily is what builds success. It's not an overnight thing that happens. It's the daily disciplines compounded over time that get you to your goal. And I think that's something that a lot of people are missing because we want things to happen so quickly. I just watched something yesterday where they said we live in a microwavable society and everyone wants everything instantly. But then when you, when you think about the simple illustration of when you buy a, a something microwavable, right? Some type of frozen food and you put it in the microwave, most times, 90% of the time, when you take that out of the microwave and you put the fork in the middle, it's still cold in the middle. But the difference between that and like your grandma's cooking, that food tastes so good is because she took time. It's not instant. It's a process. Sometimes they're marinating the, the meat overnight. They're cooking from 6 in the morning and you don't eat till 5 p.m. Because of the process it went through, it's going to be better. It's the same thing with our goals and our dreams. If we embrace the process, the, the result going to be better. But if we want it instant, it probably won't be long lasting. And I think that these are some of the things we got to start thinking about on a daily basis, man. Like I know if you're watching this video, I know you want more. I know you want more money in your account. You're probably sick and tired of only having enough to pay bills and nothing left to do the things you really want to do. I know what that feels like. But guess what? We got to be motivated every day to say, hey, the ship must come. So what can I do today to make sure that the next six months is going to be different? The next 12 months is going to be different. A year from now. Two years from now, life is going to be different. It's based on what we're doing today, the decisions we make today. You can't make decisions five years from now. I think that's going to change then. The decisions we make today change the next five years. So it's delayed gratification, y'all. So important. And I think these are the conversations we don't want to face with ourselves. And these are the conversations we don't want to sit with our friends and out. Let's normalize getting together with friends, buying a bottle, going to someone's crib, you spend $40 on a bottle that'll last you all night instead of going to a club where you're spending 200 each. What's the point in that? That's not helping anybody. I know when you're you having your, your, your good times and creating memories, talk about stuff that matter. Don't talk about what's happening on social media. Don't talk about what's happening in someone else's relationship. Talk about the future. How are you going to buy real estate? How are you going to buy land? How are you going to be able to build businesses? How can you guys partner together to, to, to participate in group economics to really grow? Th those are goals, y'all. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for people to build a community with who are thinking of these same things. And we don't have to have it all figured out. We just have to be willing to figure it out and work towards it. That's all. If you're willing to do that, then you want to be a part of what we're building. You want to be a part of this community because it starts with us. It starts with each one of us reaching each one of us. And each one of us can reach others. But we got to do it through our example. We got to do it through our behaviors. We got to do it through what we're talking about. We've got to lead by example, yo. And you don't have to know what to do, how to get from step from, from point A to point Z today. You just got to know you want to go to Z. And you got to be willing every day to get a little closer. And that's what it's all about. So we got to keep having conversations like this. We got to talk about businesses. We got to talk about investments. We got to talk about how we can get involved in real estate. We're going to talk about the mindset we need to have, how to, how to find mentors and get in the company of people who can help elevate us to the next level. Some of us need to just change the company we keep. All of us probably heard that from our parents and we were like annoyed when they would say it to us. But I'm telling you, birds of a flip fed the flock together. And that doesn't just count when it's negative. That counts when it's positive too. Because if you got people who are all thinking about goals and dreams and creating millions of dollars and, and creating business empires, guys, it's going to rub off on YouTube. 
All you got to have is a desire. So I hope y'all got value from this video, man. I'm going to keep these videos coming, you know, one day at a time. The goal eventually is to be able to impact the world, but it's going to start with you watching this right now, maybe sharing this with someone you know. I don't know how it's going to happen. All I know is I, every single day I got to do something to get close to the goal. So let's do it together. It's like going to the gym. It's easier to go to the gym consistently when you got someone you're going with. Trying to do it by yourself is going to be tough because when you don't feel like doing it, you won't. But if you got other people depending on you, if you've got a community of people who are all wanting to win and see you win as well, it's going to be a whole lot easier. And that's what we're building. So I'm hoping to see you guys all the time. Share it. Anyone you know that's like-minded, pop them into what we're building. And let's grow this thing together one day at a time, one step at a time, one person at a time. And together, y'all, we not only going to be able to change our own lives, but we're going to be able to change the world. All right? So y'all have a good one. Stay blessed. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.